फ्रेंड वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एंड सेंसर सो टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कंटिन्यू अवर चैप्टर नंबर 4 दैट इज फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग एंड एनालिसिस सो टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट फास्ट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म जीरो पेडिंग एंड नॉइज रिडक्शन विद फिल्टर ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय फास्ट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट डिस्क्रीट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म So in this lecture we will learn about the faster version of the Fourier transform that is fast Fourier transform okay so fast Fourier transform is nothing but the faster version of the discrete Fourier transform okay so the fast Fourier transform utilizes some clever algorithm to, to do the same thing as discrete Fourier transform but in much less time okay so this is the main advantage of fast Fourier transform okay So in earlier we have studied about the discrete Fourier transform. So we have seen that the computational part is too long. Okay, so here we want to reduce that. So at that time we can use fast Fourier transform to reduce the computational part. Okay, so fast Fourier transform is nothing but the computations of the discrete Fourier transform in an algorithm format. Okay, where the computational part will be reduced. Okay. so the main advantage of having fast fourier transform is that through it we can design filters okay so this is the main advantage of fast fourier transform and this is the main reason why we use fast fourier transform okay so in earlier we have seen that in discrete fourier transform we can write this like x of t is equal to sigma n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e raised to minus k 2 pi k n upon n okay so by simplifying this equation we will get equation that is x of n e raised to 0 by putting n is equal to 0 plus x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi k upon n by putting n is equal to 1 plus x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi 2 k by putting n is equal to 2 upon n and of 2 by putting n is equal to n minus 1 we will get last term that is plus x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi n minus 1 into k upon n okay so you can clearly see that for each value of k there are n complex multiplication and n minus 1 complex additions okay so there are n values of k so the total number of complex operations is n into n plus n into n minus 1 so by solving this we can say that this will become 2n square minus n. So here we have to take n square operations, okay? Or we can say that we have to perform n square operations, okay? So complex multiplies requires four real multiplies and two real additions. Where the complex additions require just two real additions, okay? So the n square complex multiplies. are the primary concerns okay so at that time in discrete fourier transform we have to perform n square operations okay so let us understand in detail so in discrete fourier transform we have to perform n square operations and in fast fourier transform we have to perform n logarithm of n operations let us understand it in detail so to determine the discrete fourier transform of the discrete signal x of n where n is the size of its domain we multiply each of its value by e raised to the sum function of n we then sum the result obtained for a given n so we can say that if we use a computer to calculate the discrete fourier transform of the signal it would need to perform n multiplication into an addition so is equal to n square operations okay so here at the time of discrete fourier transform we have to perform n square operation to calculate the discrete fourier transform of a signal now in fast fourier transform it is used algorithm to perform or to calculate the signal okay so we can say that the fast fourier transform is an algorithm that determines the discrete fourier transform of an input significantly faster than the computing it directly so in computer science lingo the fast fourier transform reduces the number of computations needed for a problem of the size n from n square to n logarithm of n so we can say that in fast fourier transform we have to perform only the operation n logarithm of n which reduces the number of computations which we needed okay so let us understand it with detail so 
you can clearly see in this table if we have n sample thousand 10 raised to 6 and 10 raised to 9 so by performing n square operation so this will become for in first table we will get 10 raised to 6 then 10 raised to 12 and 10 raised to 80 and in by performing n logarithm of n operation we will get a 10 raised to 4 20x 10 raised to 6 and 30x 10 raised to 9 okay so we can say that it took one nanosecond to perform one operation and it would take the fast Fourier transform algorithm approximately 30 seconds to compute the discrete Fourier transform for a problem of the size 10 raised to 9. You can clearly see in table, okay, so the regular algorithm would need several decades, okay. So we can say that for 10 raised to 18 nanoseconds, so it is nothing but 31.2 years. And next 30 x 10 raised to 9 nanosecond is nothing but the 30 seconds. So you can clearly see in this table with the help of fast Fourier transform we can reduce the computation part which we needed with the help of fast Fourier transform. Okay so fast Fourier transform is nothing but the faster version of the discrete Fourier transform to calculate or to compute the signal. Okay now let us understand what do you mean by zero padding. Okay. So zero padding is a simple concept. It is simply referred to adding zero to the end of a time domain signal to increase its length. Okay. So zero padding is nothing but the adding of zero to the end of time domain signal to increase its length. Okay. So fast Fourier transform generally requires the number of data points and to be an integer power of 2 to attain maximum computational efficiency okay so if the data points n is not in the form of integer power of 2 so at that time zeros can be added at the end of the original signal that is known as the zero padding okay so zero padding is nothing but the adding zero to the end of the time domain signal to increase its length okay you can clearly see in this figure the zero padding zone okay by adding zero at the end of the time domain signal you can clearly see in this figure this one is our zero padding zone okay now let us understand it with examples so you can clearly see in this figure so here we have the example that is 1 megahertz and 1.05 megahertz real valued sinusoidal waveforms we will be using throughout this article okay so the time domain length of this waveform is 1000 samples at sampling rate of 100 megahertz so the length we can say that the time length of will become 10 nanoseconds okay so if we zero pad the waveform with the additional 1000 samples so the resulting waveform is produced you can clearly see in second image okay so there are a few reasons why we are using zero padding so the most common reason is to make a waveform have a power of two number of the sample first reason is to make a waveform have a power of number two and second when the time domain length of the waveform is power of two so at the time we can say that which are extremely efficient and can be used to speed up the processing time okay so to speed up the processing time and to get the extreme efficiency at that time we can use zero padding okay so you can clearly see in this image first image that is time domain Domain signal image here we have 1000 samples okay and if we have sampling rate that is 100 megahertz so we will get that is 10 nanosecond okay so this is 10 nanosecond time length okay but here you can clearly see in this second image so by adding zero padding so this one is our zero padding zone or zero padding area and here we have completed our main signal graph okay and here we have zero padding zone okay so this is nothing but to increase the efficiency and to speed up the processing time we can use zero padding okay so this is the meaning of zero padding okay now let us understand next topic that is noise reduction with the filter okay so we can say that a large amount of work has been done is many different fields like signal processing statistics and information theory that to improve the signal to noise ratio okay so noise reduction plays a key role is a large set of application beyond the operations like image audio and video processing 
Okay, so we can say that noise reduction is necessary to increase the signal to noise ratio or we can say that to increase the efficiency of the signal. Okay, so at that time we can use filter to reduce the noise. Okay, so we can say that a filter in the frequency domain is a window is a window so free filter is one type of window in frequency domain that passes certain frequency component and rejects other frequency components okay so we can say that filter have ability to reject the low frequency noise or high frequency noise okay so we can say that to remove the noise from the signal at the time we can use filter okay so there are many types of filters available so most common types of filters are first one low pass filter okay so low pass filter is generally used to reduce high frequency noise okay so low frequency components below the cutoff frequency pass okay so low pass filter is generally used to reduce the high frequency noise next one is high pass filter so high frequency components above the cutoff frequency pass so high pass filter is generally used to reduce the low frequency noise okay and next one is band pass filter so combination of low and high pass filter it is known as a band pass filter so it is used to keep a frequency band okay so these are the common filter which we can use to reduce the high frequency noise or low frequency noise okay now most common type of filter that is butterworth low pass filter okay so with the help of this equation we can easily reduce the high frequency noise from the signal okay so after using low pass filter we will get this type of signal okay now where g is magnitude response f is frequency fc is cutoff frequency and n is order of the filter okay now next one that is most popular filter that is butterworth high pass filter which we can use to reduce the low frequency noise from the signal okay so with the help of this equation we can easily reduce the low frequency noise okay so after using this filter we will get this type of signal okay which is we can say that noise free signal okay so this is the main purpose of filter so to reduce the noise we can use filter okay now let us understand how we can implement the filter so we can understand it with implementation processor okay so first step convert the signal from the time domain to frequency domain by using fast fourier transform as we know that the fourier transform is generally used to convert the time domain signal to frequency domain okay so first of all use fast fourier transform to convert the signal from time domain to frequency domain okay so to convert frequency from time domain to frequency domain we have to use fourier transform so that's why we have studied about fourier transform discrete fourier transform and fast fourier transform in our previous lectures okay now next step load magnitude mode of fcu versus fu to determine the frequency of interest okay now next step choose the type of filters okay so first of all choose the filter and then select the filter parameters and define the filter array g based on the frequency f okay next step apply filter to the amplitude of the signal in the time domain and then multiply point by point like this mod of y u is equal to g u into mod of x okay now compute the filter signal like this y is equal to mod of y u into cos phi u plus sin phi u where phi is a phase angle okay now then last step that convert the signal back into the time domain by using inverse fast fourier transform as we know that with the help of inverse fourier transform we can convert the frequency domain signal back to the time domain signal okay so this is the processor how we can reduce the noise or we can say that how we can reduce the high frequency noise or low frequency noise with the help of filter okay so these are the procedure now let us understand it with example so you can clearly see that here we have two graph first one is s1 and here we have s2 by addition of this we will get this type of signal so this signal in time domain okay so first of all convert time domain signal into frequency domain with the help of fast fourier transform okay now next step that is first apply high pass filter to remove the low frequency noise in this frequency domain signal okay so by applying high pass filter we will get this type of signal in frequency domain okay now this signal is in frequency domain so 
So to convert this signal again into time domain, here we have to use inverse fast Fourier transform. Okay. So now here we will get with the help of inverse fast Fourier transform signal in time domain. So we can say that now this is noise free signal. Okay. So by using this high pass filter, we can easily remove the low frequency noise from the signal, but signal which is in frequency domain. Okay. So first of all, we have to convert this time domain signal into the frequency domain with the help of fast Fourier transform. Now in next here also we have frequency domain signal. So here also we have to use low pass filter to remove the high frequency noise. Okay. So here we will get signal which is in frequency domain with the help of low pass filter. And now by using inverse pass Fourier, we will convert this frequency domain signal into time domain signal. Okay. So now this is noise free signal. Okay. So this is the main procedure of using high pass filter or low pass filter. Okay. So now let us understand one example that removing noise from the inclinometer reading with filter. Okay. So you can clearly see in this first image we have inclinometer reading that is in time domain okay so here we have inclinometer reading which is in time domain form okay so to convert this time domain signal into frequency domain form so first of all we have to use fast Fourier transform and then by using low pass filter or high pass filter we can easily remove the high frequency noise and low frequency noise from this signal okay and then by using again inverse fast Fourier transform we can easily convert this signal which is in frequency domain to time domain okay now in third image you can clearly see this one is noise free signal which is in time domain okay so this is the example of the inclinometer reading okay that is removing of the noise okay so we can see that frequency domain analysis help to choose a low pass filter with cutoff frequency is equal to one upon day to reduce the high frequency noise from the original signal okay so noise free signal you can clearly see in this image okay so this is the procedure how we can reduce or how we can remove the noise from the signal or how we can reduce the noise with the help of high pass filter low pass filter and bend pass filters okay so in this lecture we have studied about what is fast Fourier transform and how we can use fast Fourier transform. So as we studied that fast Fourier transform is generally used to convert the signal to time domain to frequency domain. Okay. Next we have studied about zero panning. What do you mean by zero panning? And next we have studied about the filter to reduce the noise frequency and different types of filters and how we can reduce the noise from the signal with the help of its processor. Okay. Thank you for watching this video.